the Inca Empire, also known as Tahuantinsuyu, did not have a written language like many other ancient civilizations. Instead, they primarily used a system of record keeping and communication known as quipu or kipu. Quipus were made of various colored strings and knots, and they were used to represent numbers, quantities, and possibly even some basic information. As for spoken languages within the Inca Empire, there were many different indigenous languages spoken throughout the empire due to its vast territory. The Inca rulers and elite class primarily spoke Quechua, which was the most widely used language of the empire. Quechua had several regional variations, and it remains spoken by some indigenous communities in the Andes to this day. In addition to Quechua, the Incas also recognized other languages and dialects in their diverse empire, such as Aymara, Pukina, and many more. The Incas were relatively tolerant of linguistic diversity and allowed different groups to continue using their own languages alongside Quechua. It's important to note that there was no standardized written language for these languages, so much of what we know about them comes from oral traditions, later colonial era documents, and modern day efforts to preserve and revitalize indigenous languages. In summary, the primary spoken language of the Inca Empire was Quechua, but many other languages and dialects were spoken throughout the empire due to its vast territorial extent and diverse population. The Inca Empire, like many other ancient civilizations, possessed a rich body of wisdom, knowledge, and cultural practices that were passed down through generations. Much of this wisdom was oral, as the Incas did not have a system of writing in the traditional sense. Here are some aspects of Inca wisdom and knowledge. The Incas were masterful agriculturalists, and their knowledge of terracing, irrigation, and crop cultivation in the challenging Andean terrain was a testament to their wisdom. They developed advanced agricultural techniques to grow a variety of crops at different altitudes, ensuring a stable food supply for their empire. The Incas had a complex belief system that was intertwined with their understanding of the natural world. They worshipped various deities, including the sun god Inti, and believed that the rulers were divine descendants. Their understanding of the cosmos, as reflected in their religious practices and architecture, such as Machu Picchu's alignment with celestial events, demonstrated a profound sense of cosmic wisdom. Much of Inca wisdom was passed down through oral tradition, including myths, legends, and historical accounts. Oral storytellers, known as Amautas, played a crucial role in preserving and transmitting this knowledge from one generation to the next. The Incas had a strong sense of ethics and morality, emphasizing values such as reciprocity, aini, community cooperation, and mutual support. These principles were central to their social organization and governance. The Incas had a deep understanding of the medicinal properties of plants and herbs, they used various plants for healing purposes and had a well-developed system of traditional medicine. The Incas were renowned for their architectural and engineering achievements, including the construction of impressive stone structures without the use of mortar. Their knowledge of stonework, engineering and construction techniques demonstrated their wisdom in practical and artistic domains. The Inca Empire had a sustainable approach to resource management with practices such as crop rotation and the construction of terraces to prevent soil erosion. They recognized the importance of maintaining a harmonious relationship with the environment. Inca leaders, particularly the Sapa Inca, emperor, were expected to possess wisdom and wisdom-based leadership qualities. Their rule was based on principles of justice and responsibility to the well-being of the people. It's important to note that much of what we know about Inca wisdom and knowledge 
comes from the records of Spanish conquistadors and later scholars, as well as from the oral traditions of indigenous communities that have preserved aspects of Inca culture. The Inca Empire left a lasting legacy of wisdom and cultural richness that continues to be celebrated and studied today. The political structure of the Inca Empire was highly centralized and hierarchical, with a strong emphasis on the authority of the Sapa Inca, emperor, and the state's control over various aspects of life. Here are key aspects of Inca politics. At the pinnacle of Inca political power was the Sapa Inca, who was considered the divine ruler and the son of the sun god, Inti. The Sapa Inca had absolute authority over the empire and was revered as a deity. Succession to the throne was typically patrilineal, with the emperor's eldest son usually succeeding him. Below the Sapa Inca was a noble class known as the Incap Rantin, which consisted of royal relatives, high-ranking officials, and military leaders. The nobility held significant administrative and military responsibilities and enjoyed privileges in terms of land and resources. The empire was divided into provinces, each governed by an official known as an apiu. These provincial governors were appointed by the Sapa Inca and were responsible for maintaining order, collecting taxes and ensuring the loyalty of the local population. The Incas developed an efficient administrative system to manage their vast empire. They used a system of record-keeping called quipu, knotted strings, to keep track of various aspects, including census data, tribute collection and resource allocation. The Incas constructed an extensive network of roads and relay stations known as tambos to facilitate communication and the movement of troops and goods throughout the empire. This allowed for rapid response to any challenges to Inca authority. The Inca state controlled economic resources and labor through a system called mita. Under this system, labor was required for various state projects, including agriculture, construction, and mining. In return, individuals received food, clothing, and other necessities. The Inca rulers held religious authority as well as political power. They were considered intermediaries between the people and the gods, particularly the sun god Inti. Religious ceremonies and rituals were an integral part of Inca governance, often used to legitimize the authority of the rulers. The Incas had a legal system that included judges and officials responsible for resolving disputes and enforcing laws. Punishments for crimes varied depending on the severity of the offense and were intended to maintain order within the empire. The Inca Empire expanded through both conquest and diplomacy. Conquered territories were expected to pay tribute and acknowledge the authority of the Sapa Inca. However, the Incas often allowed local rulers to retain some autonomy as long as they remained loyal to the empire. While the Inca state was highly centralized, it also had a degree of decentralized administration. Local customs and traditions were often respected, and local leaders were allowed to govern with some autonomy as long as they remained loyal to the empire. The Inca political system was characterized by its centralization of power, divine authority of the emperor, and effective organization of the empire's vast territories. This political structure played a significant role in the success and longevity of the Inca Empire. Marriage and family life in the Inca Empire were important aspects of society, and they were governed by a set of cultural and social norms. Here are some key aspects of marriage and family life in the Inca Empire. Incan marriages were typically arranged by families, and they were often influenced by social, political, and economic considerations. Marriages were not solely based on romantic love, but also on factors such as social status, lineage, and strategic alliances. While monogamy was common among commoners, the Inca elite, including the Sapa Inca, emperor, and nobility, 
were allowed to have multiple wives. Polygamy was seen as a symbol of prestige and power. Marriage ceremonies were important social events and were typically accompanied by rituals and feasting. The specific rituals and customs varied among different regions and ethnic groups within the empire. Marriages often occurred within the same ethnic or social group. Marrying outside one's group was less common, but could be used as a means of forging alliances between different regions or ethnicities. Inca individuals generally married at a relatively young age. Commoners typically married in their late teens or early twenties, while the elite might marry at an earlier age. Divorce was allowed in Inca society, although it was subject to certain rules and regulations. For example, divorce might be granted if a couple was childless or if one partner was abusive. In such cases, the woman often retained custody of the children. In Inca society, women had important roles within the household, including managing domestic affairs and raising children. While men held most positions of political and religious authority, women had influence within their families. Children were highly valued in Inca society, and the birth of a child was celebrated with ceremonies. The eldest son often inherited his father's position and responsibilities, ensuring the continuation of the family lineage. Inca families were often part of extended family networks and multiple generations. Kinship and social relationships were essential in Inca society. The concept of Ailu referred to a kinship group that shared land, resources, and responsibilities. These groups played a crucial role in the organization of labor and resources. Children were educated within the family unit and were taught skills and knowledge relevant to their future roles. Nobility received more formal education and training. Inca religious beliefs were intertwined with family life, and many household rituals and offerings were made to honor ancestral spirits and deities. The head of the household often played a central role in these rituals. It's important to note that Inca society was diverse, and specific marriage and family practices could vary among different regions and ethnic groups within the empire. Despite these variations, Family and marriage were integral components of Inca culture and society. In summary, the Inca Empire was marked by a highly structured political system, a deep well of cultural wisdom, and distinct marriage customs that played a vital role in the society's functioning and cohesion. These aspects contributed to the empire's unique and enduring legacy in history.